Welcome folks, I am Jabby Kuwait, joined by Char Kirk. Hello. And we are looking at Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the official Red Band trailer. So this is gonna be <laughs> saucy. Sweary. All right, here we go. I'm Rick Dalton. It's my pleasure, man. Mr. Schwartz. I'm in my office. Put it down. That's your son? No, it's my stunt double, Cliff Booth. Last night, we watched a Rick Dalton double feature. <laughs> All the shooting. <laughs> What's the matter, partner? It's official, old buddy. Who well, has been? Uh, oh. guess nice. Here I am, flat on my ass. Who, who I got living next door to me? I'm Sharon Tate. I'm in the movie. You're in this? I play Miss Carlson, the class. <laughs> Don't you forget it. Wow. Ooh. In terms of like just the drama of it all, it reminds me most of Jackie Brown because stylistically that's what it's closest to. Outside of that, like you've got Reservoir Dogs, you got Pulp Fiction and Kill Bill. Like none of his movies are like this. This doesn't seem to show us a whole lot of violence. It's the closest thing to a drama that I think Tarantino has done. Even though it's like filled with like comedic moments and, and funny moments. Like there's like humor in the drama. Right. Yeah, yeah, no. I mean, it looks really cool. I'm very curious because as soon as Margot Robbie goes, I'm Sharon Tate. I was like, oh, are we going to go into the, to the Manson murders? And then you see Charlie Manson and you're like, Oh, but then, you know, it's still telling the story of Leonardo DiCaprio as an actor, but I'm really wondering if it is going to kind of delve into that aspect of it. Why would you have Sharon Tate and Charlie Manson in your movie if you're not going to have well, a little bit of murder? Right, well, I think it's long been known that they were going to explore that in the story. I don't know to what degree. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if it was like a significant part of the movie, like a, a really big part, like the Bruce Lee thing, for instance, is just a small fraction of the film. Right. It's not a large part, even though that took up a, a, a big chunk of the trailer last time because it was just a, such a funny moment. So it could be, who just, knows? You yeah, know. it could just be touched upon. I do vaguely remember reading about that in like entertainment news, but it just seems interesting that you would put that in your story and then just kind of gloss over it. Well, I think the point is to kind of just ex take us through the different aspects of Hollywood from that era that are probably not as talked about or haven't been portrayed as much as it could have been or should have been. Right. I mean, up until recently, we didn't have a Manson biopic, you know? No, there's like no, a lot of stuff well, coming now, out, now, yeah. now, now it's all coming out, but like at the time, before this movie was written, it didn't seem like there was much about him other than like documentaries and stuff like that, right. maybe. I mean, this is obviously a very fascinating movie. I love the style of it. It feels, yes. it feels very, it feels like it's honoring that era. What it's showing you, the way it's shot, and it, it feels, I don't know, I just, it seems like yeah, a really fun cast as well. For sure, it certainly does feel like a love letter to the period. The colors and, yeah, like you said, the way it's shot, it looks cool. I feel like Tarantino has his dream cast here. Yeah. The only person missing is Samuel L. Jackson. I'm wondering <gasps> if he's going to do a narration at some point because he hasn't made an appearance at all in this trailer yet. Right. But everybody else is here. You need you need Hotori Hanzu, 
and Samuel L. Jackson, and then it's like the complete thing. Right? Yeah. It seems like everyone's coming back in this. You got, I mean, you got Leonardo DiCaprio, you got uh, a Brad Pitt, who both appeared in um, uh, t previous Tarantino films. You've mm -hmm. got Kurt Russell, who was obviously in the last one. I'm trying to think who else I saw in this trailer. I feel like there were so many faces that we've seen in previous installments. And then you had the, the Nazi thing, which is yeah. obviously a callback to Inglorious Bastards. Yes. Even though I'm sure, I don't remember any really famous Nazi films uh, or, or anti-Nazi films, World War II films like that from uh, the 70s or 60s. There could be films like this that exist that I just haven't heard about. I mean, Tarantino is one of those people who have seen films that you probably didn't even know existed. Yes. Because his, I mean, he's got a movie theater Christ's sake, like where he shows old films all the time. It's fun fact, that theater, if you don't know already, is very specific about always showing film. Like your movie has to be presented in film. It doesn't show digital at all. Okay. Like it's very, very old school. This is a very interesting story watching a man kind of fall apart. He, like he was once at this prime and now he's kind of coming down and he's washed up and he's got to kind of redeem himself over the course of the story. It seems like that's what it's about is finding himself again. Right. Finding that long lost glory that he once had that he, that he has no longer. Like at, in the previous trailer, it showed this little girl who was like, you know, giving him kudos, going, oh, you're the best, that was the best scene I've ever seen, like, best acting I've ever seen, and he's like, uh -huh. he's like yeah, and he, he, it's like he's holding on to this thing that is kind of slipping through his fingers. Right. And that's a very fascinating thing to watch, and I feel like a lot of actors have gone through that, a lot of big actors have gone through that, where you, you know, the higher you go, the, the bigger the fall. I would say that every actor who's successful probably goes through that at some point, because one minute you're young and on top of the world and everybody loves you, and then you start getting older and new movie stars start coming up and yeah. taking your place, eventually, you're gonna fall like that's just the reality of being in this industry you know you're not always gonna be at the top all the time it, it comes around yeah i had that with a mcdonald's commercial once <laughs> what i just thought that'd be funny to say it's the truth <laughs> <laughs> i had a mcdonald's commercial that was paying me extremely handsomely and then one day the checks stopped coming and i'm like what and they like got smaller and smaller i'm like no no but no <laughs> You know, now I gotta go back to my regular job. Yeah. It's fascinating to me as well. Brad Pitt is playing the stunt guy, and yet I'm not really sure sort of how prominent his storyline is gonna be in this because it is very much about Leonardo DiCaprio and, you know, his fading glory, but where does his stunt double come into this? Are they just best friends? Yeah, and yeah. They leave I mean, it at that? I think I think they're just best pals. Like he's almost like his bodyguard. I'm realizing that the Nazi thing is it could be a reference to Escape from New York, even though that came out like 12 years later, because um, that that's Kurt Russell's look with the eye patch and everything. Escape from New York, Escape from LA. Oh, uh, even okay. even though that character never appeared in any like warlike setting outside of what was in the future. Uh, that that to me is what it reminds me of with the eye patch. That's immediately what I think of. Oh. Is th when I see an eye patch like that and on a white dude, my, uh, in in a non like pirate era esque film, it seems like I, I immediately am reminded of Iroquois Pliskin or whatever his name was from Escape from New York. I'm sure this is laden with all kinds of fun references. By the way, Al Pacino's in this. I don't know if I've ever seen Al Pacino in a Tarantino film. Th just the idea of them working together is super cool to me. Yeah. Because. Tarantino loves to use actors that Martin Scorsese has used. That's one of his big things. That's how, oh. my, that's how my uncle David Provel got involved in one of Tarantino's projects in Four Rooms. David Provel was the star of one of the four stories in Four Rooms. That I think Tarantino produced that. And it's because Tarantino is obsessed with using actors Scorsese has worked with. And so for him to use uh, Al Pacino in a film, finally, I think is a dream come true for Tarantino because I'm pretty sure he's had his eye on Pacino for a long time. <laughs> this is probably the biggest cast that uh, Tarantino has worked with uh, so far because he's, traditionally he likes to use a lot of small actors mm -hmm. because he knows he has act, uh, access to smaller actors. Like he's mentioned this before where he's got a list of his favorite actors that he knows he can get and then he'll have like maybe one big actor in there. Right. One actor that's like hard to come by and then he'll he'll make it work with that. Here he's got DiCaprio, uh, Brad Pitt, Pacino, all uh, like all these big names together. I'm like, whoa, this is like, this is different from Tarantino in that, re in that respect. And Margot Robbie as well. Yeah, well could it be because this is his 
ninth movie and apparently this is the last one and there's not going to be any more so he's just trying to go out with a bang. I don't think this is going to be his last I, one. I personally don't think so either. Yeah. I'm like, come on now. What, why this, like, I'm only... It is right well, that he's his, going, I'm his, only making nine movies. His whole, and... his whole thing is that he feels like directors have a time just like boxers. At some point, you got to hang your gloves up and then just admit, like, your time has passed. And, and like so, Leonardo yeah. DiCaprio well, in the I mean, movie. Well, I mean, that might be what is the resolve at the end of this film is that DiCaprio just realizes, you know what, my time has passed. And he hangs his gloves, he hangs his hat, so to speak. And so I mean, that might be what this is. It's almost like a meta movie. Right, yeah. And, which is cool. Um, but I, I think Tarantino still has time, like he still has stories. stories. He still has stuff left to speak about. And I don't think he's done, but m maybe. Like, I, I mean, we thought Daniel Day Lewis was done for like three movies, and he, you know, he's now, like, now he's a dressmaker. No, no. I, I really don't think Daniel Day Lewis is done either. I, on my shirt, I forgot Christopher Walken. Like, it'd be awesome if Christopher Walken made an appearance in here. Oh, yeah. This looks like obviously a really fun film, and if it is the last one, it looks like a really cool one to go out on because it, it makes sense. It's of an era that Tarantino clearly loves. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to see if there's any like black exploitation stuff in this as well because he's a huge fan of black exploitation. Uh, I'm pretty sure if this is his last one, he's gonna try to get every single thing in there that is about what he loves about film. Right. I mean, for this to be a movie about making movies is just like, I'm pretty sure. You guys, thanks so much for hanging out with us. Let us know your thoughts on our thoughts in the comments below, your thoughts on the trailer, of course. And uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell icon so you get notified every time we drop another video. Uh, check out other reactions, reviews, short films, vlogs, interviews. I'm Javi Kuei. This is Acharika. Peace out.